All right, today we have this uh, A1989, which comes out of a 2018 13-inch um, MacBook Pro with a touch bar with the complaint of no power after liquid damage. Now, overviewing the board, we have a little bit of corrosion um, in this area right here near our USB-C controller, but it's relatively minor. I'll show you guys that right now so you can see what I'm talking about. So one thing to take in consideration here, we have some nasty looking caps right up here too. Um, so one thing to take in consideration is that these USB-C controllers are actually underfilled and that makes them a little bit, um, well, a lot more resilient to uh, liquid. Um, we have some corrosion on nearby capacitors and on this resistor, but it's not overly bad. Um, so let's go ahead and plug this in and let's see what this does. So, USB amp meter. We have 5 volts and 0 milliamps. Now, differential diagnosis for 5 volts and 0 milliamps includes a short on PPBest G3 hot. Um, the board might be in DFU mode. We might have a failed USB controller or more uncommonly, we could have a short on PP3V3 um, G3 hot. Now, a short on PP3V3 G3 hot would be unlikely to present with 0.1 milliamps as usually you will get five volts with a higher milliamp rating. Um, so these capacitors look to be on PP bus G3 hot and these don't look too good. So I'm gonna go ahead and just check if I have a short on PP bus G3 hot and let's see, see what it is. So that would be my leading contender of the most likely uh, problem that this board has given uh, five volts, zero milliamps. So PP bus resistance to ground is 0 0.4 ohms. Now we could just go ahead and inject voltage and do thermal imaging, which I'll probably do for diagnostic, um, not for diagnostic, for um, for uh, teaching purposes. So I'm going to go ahead and just measure, um, I'm just going to go ahead and inject voltage on PP bus G3 hot. We're just going to do 1.4 volts and see what gets hot. So generally keep it under 1.5 volts when injecting on PP bus G3 hot if you do not know where the short may be because um, we do not know if the CPU may have, I mean, if one of the CPU MOSFETs may be shorted. And uh, to note, this also came uh, from a previous repair store, and you see somebody might have measured here prior than I did. I don't want people to think that I'm going through boards and pre-diagnosing them, because that's not the case. So, just out of this wire. Get this wire on here. And we're pulling about two amps. I'm just gonna try and localize the short real fast with my thermal. And it's pretty much coming from where I expected it to. No sign of a short in the CPU area, so I can go ahead and crank up that voltage. And now, you should see where it's coming from. So, I could smell it burning. Go back down in amperage, but I think that's actually the wire burning. So, I'm just going to use a little alcohol. You can clearly see which one it is. Actually, it looks like... Nope, just this one right here. So we should be able to just pull that off and our board should be all right. We got to replace the both of these though because those don't look too good. So I'm just going to get my iron. I don't want to use hot air right here cuz I don't want to melt those connectors. So I'm just going to get my iron. Usually these don't hang on very well, but this this one seems to be. Yep, 
Yeah, these are stubborn. Usually when they're that corroded that you can just flick them right off, but... These guys want to put up a fight, so I'll use my hot air. Just have to be careful to blow it away from the connectors, which are off frame, but there's two connectors directly above this that row of tantalums. There's one, and there's two. Let's check if our short is resolved. Yep, we are, wait, nope, let's see. Yep, we're at 400, 500, 600 ohms and climbing, so that is resolved. So, that's one thing off our list. Uh, we will have to replace those guys. Those are going to be 10 microfarad, if I recall. And then, what's next here? So, this resistor's got to go. That uh, MOSFET is probably good, um, but that resistor has definitely got to go. The CD3217 is going to be fine. Uh, this capacitor should probably go uh, because the end cap is compromised. Now we need to see what that does. If it's just a decoupling capacitor for a 3v3 G3 hot, we could safely leave that off because if we replace that, one, it's going to get really hard to get in there with an iron, and it's going to do more damage than what's worth. If we do it with hot air, we will float this chip, and then that is a problem. So we don't we don't want to do that. So I am going to get flux in this area. These two resistors are going to get replaced. And I'm going to check my schematic right here and see um, what line that capacitor is on. If it's, if it's important, we'll have to put it in there with an iron, but if it's not important, we're just going to leave it off in the in the measure of safety. The capacitor in question is C3200. It's just a 10 microfarad decoupling capacitor for PP3V3 at G3RTC. It is of no concern leaving it off, so we should be good to go there. Both our corroded resistors are 10K201 uh, ohm resistors, so those should be fairly re um, readily available. I'm also going to replace this MOSFET here. Yeah, see that resistor? See how it, there's a hole in it, the discoloration there? That resistor is blown, and what that tells me is that that MOSFET is most likely going to be bad as well. Yeah, it just came right off. Same same pattern with this one. There's a hole in it. It's hard to see, but you can kind of see that little lightness on it, and that's going to be blown too. The reason why I'm sticking right here and just moving the iron back and forth is there's still corrosion on those pads and I do not want to solder on top of corrosion. It's cleared now, but that's what I was doing there. So I'm going to replace or remove this one. I'm blowing the air away from the CD because I do not want to float it. And that's off. Take note of orientation here. Looks like going to go this way. So I'm going to keep this here just for future reference. Let me go find a compatible replacement. So we should be able to find this on many other uh, similar boards. Alright, so there's one of these compatible components on an A1990 board and good thing I was scanned over here. Just kidding. I already know, knew that was here, but we've got to take care of that too um, after we're done. That's non-critical for operation. This is here. So... 2B towards the top, dot towards the bottom corner, bottom right corner. So let's grab a new one. And then we also have uh, two resistors here. So you're just going to scrape away here. That solder looks good enough. So with flux, it'll be fine.
do not want to use too much unnecessary heat in this area because of the underfilled CD3215. Just double check. No solder blobs popping out the sides. That's good. That looks connected, but I'll use my iron and touch it up a bit. And we got one more right here that we will be using our iron on because one of the pads is broken. So let me just double check that this is a 10K ohm, and it is, so I need to find another one of these resistors. And we should be able to take one from. right over here all right I'm gonna go ahead and pull my resistor off the donor board here just gonna tack it down Like that. Now it's in place. I can make it look better. And then we'll have to run a wire to PP bus. I think it's PP bus anyway. There we go. Nice strong joint. And let's see here. That is going to be PP bus, so I'm just going to run a wire um, up here from these caps that we replaced. That's the most direct, and that'll ensure a nice connection. Um, I would have concerns of taking it from the other resistor right there because I don't know if the V out of that area is intact. So I am going to uh, run one from the capacitors that we are about to replace. So let me go ahead and find two compatible uh, 10 microfarads. I think they're 10 microfarads. I should probably double check on that. So it's these two right here, and these are for the speaker amps. Of course they're for the speaker amps. The speaker amp capacitors always blow, and these are actually 22 microfarad. Um, both these here are going to be 22 microfarad. And these are going to be off of a subrail of um, PPBus G3 Hot. So we're actually going to take them from a different area because we do not want to mess with uh, USB current sensing. And not USB current sensing, uh, speaker amp current sensing, as there is a current sensing resistor for this circuit. So I'm going to go ahead and find two 22 microfarad capacitors and go ahead and replace those. First off, let's clean this up. And this one capacitor here does not look good either. So that's going to need to get out of there. Come on, heat up. There we go. I'm just getting... Uh, a sufficient amount of lead it in here and then I'm gonna wick away it's not gonna look like this when we're done I just want to clean all this oxidation off the pads looks better get our wick iron is stuck on my donor board the cord was stuck I should say Time for a bigger tip. High thermal mass area and a BC1 is not the right choice for that. There, look at that. Nice, clean pads. That one out of there. So 
Switch back to my small one. Let's grab our replacements. There's that, now let's grab a um, replacement for that smaller one. All right, getting our replacement capacitor. That is done. Now our only thing left here is for PP bus. So we could take PP bus from this over here. This current sensing resistor is disconnected, so it's not really a concern. I thought there's a current sensing uh, circuit here, but there's not. So just gonna go ahead and uh, steal a wire from those shunt resistor pads right there. Make sure that. That is indeed PP bus, and it is. I always like to double check before doing things. Grab my jumper wire. Come on. I want you to be perfect, little wire. There, that's good enough. I don't like that bend right there, so I'm going to back it off just a little bit. That's better. Anytime I run wires like this, I mention for the people that are unfamiliar, this is enamel coated wire and it will not short components if it lays across them. The enamel coating is actually very, uh, very durable and you're not going to scrape it off from the wire rubbing around. It's going to take a soldering iron or something to, to damage it like that. And then we'll also do conformal coat.
And this is going to be tricky because I do not want to break my resistor or the solder joint. So I'm going to use very light movement on this. And the solder joint broke. solder There we go. All right. That looks good. Let's just overview it. Make sure it's not. Looks good. Yep, so this will get conformal code in this area. Um, just want to push this off to the side just a little bit, or actually. Like that is better. And then this whole area will get conformal coat and everything. But that looks good. So now let's see if we're back to normal as far as uh, USB current goes, current and voltage. So I'm going to. I still have one capacitor I need to take off. Actually, let me do that before I turn it on just in case this is shorted. Like that. Alright. With any luck, we'll actually get booting current. There you go. 20 volts. 15 milliamps. 56. That is booting current for one of these boards. It's going to drop down because it sees that there's no trackpad connected. It throttles the CPU. Uh, the heat sink. Let's just check CPU V core voltage. CPU V core voltage phase. Yep, 6.4 volts. It is present, and 6.4 volts means it is posting. So that's pretty much it for this one. Uh, let's just take care of this here. Um, we may not need a new connector here. This looks relatively superficial in nature. We may be able to get away with Q-tip and alcohol, flux and heat, but we will see. Mm. Mm, I don't trust it. Let's replace it. So how I would do these is probably different than most will, but flux, heat, we don't have to care about the temperature taking off the old one. Like that.
Well, that was 430, and you saw that connector was fairly intact. Grab our new connector. We're going to solder this at 265 Celsius. Touch bar FPC connector. Another thing we need to be concerned about is how the connector on the touch bar itself looks. Actually, I'm going to go a bit lower. I'm going to go 240. Remember, our solder melts at... Well, this is leaded, so it'll be like... I'm not sure what the exact... I know lead-free is 217, so leaded is somewhere under that. Use a little more flux on this side. Connector's a little bit bowed, but it should be alright. See if I can't. Now I go in with my iron. And I'll fix this Boeing. Should be good to go. All my pins seem to be good. All right, now it's time to test in the enclosure. All right, in the enclosure, you can see the uh, connector there is corroded. It's not bad, though. Uh, I'm just going to Q-tip an alcohol, and then should be fine. I don't, I don't think that looks very superficial in nature. So I, I think we'll be okay. Come on, stop moving. To anybody wondering what that spot is on my thumbnail, that is where I 
either sliced or hit my nail really hard towards the nail base and it bled and that's what you get a little bleed under the nail yeah that's fine just to be on the safe side what I'll do is a little flux and a little heat should be good. Alright, let's put our board in and let's see if it works. Alright, let's go ahead and plug our board in and let's see what this does. Do we have trackpad click? And that is an Apple logo. So let's see. Um, let's see what this this boots into an operating system and that is a progress bar moving along nicely I don't want to reveal the customer's name so I'm going to put my hand up here but this appears to be working we have a cursor now and yeah this is booted so yeah this is fixed and uh, thank you for watching and I hope this uh, video helps you in some way